I think this is great for college football, and I can already tell we're going to have some great arguments about the Big Ten and the SEC in the near future. And just like that, bam! Things between the Big Ten and the SEC, they just got 10 times more interesting. What has it been now, give or take, I'd say roughly 15 years, I think we can agree on that. The SEC has dominated the sport of college football, and it's not even particularly close. Even as much as people hate the SEC, at the end of the day, you'll see so many people state, yeah, I do hate them, but at the end of the day, I gotta respect them. And that's how it's been. It's very similar, and it reminds me a lot of the Tennessee and Georgia matchup over the past couple of years. I've seen so many Tennessee fans say, man, I hate Georgia, I hate them so much, but gotta give them credit, they're a great football team. And with Nick Saban still being at Alabama, I'd say he's got about 8, 12 more years left in the tank. You get Kirby Smart, he's still in his prime. Josh Heupel, he's on the come up. Brian Kelly, he's entering his prime. It looked like, at the beginning at least, the SEC was about to dominate the sport for another 15 years. But, and I have a really big but, that was up until some major things changed. The Pac-12 has fallen apart, and the Big Ten, they've added a lot of new teams. And may I add to that, not just new teams, but a lot of solid teams and programs. At the same time, though, I do gotta remind you, the SEC, they didn't just sit back and watch, they also added Texas and Oklahoma. So yes, even though the SEC was already the best of the best, they're still gonna get a little better from top to bottom. But the Big Ten added four new teams, and why is that important? Because currently, as to when I'm speaking, and I don't think this is gonna change within the next couple of years, Three out of those four teams they added are top 25 teams and arguably top 15 teams. In today's video, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a deep dive and look at who's the new better conference. We're going to try to figure out who has the best top teams and also from overall top to bottom who's better. I'm extremely excited to get into that and also we got one other minor topic we're going to speak on and that is... And you knew this was going to happen. The Pac-12, they're already losing some of their bowl tie-ins. Or at least, my bad, my apologies, it looks like they're going to be losing them. We don't get a jam-packed video, but definitely got a couple interesting topics, as always. If you like college football content and you want to be a part of our amazing college football community, it's simple. Consider joining, and if you don't want to join, that's cool too. All right, Matt, blah, 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 crap, blah, 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 Let's get on to it. All right, first things first, we're going to speak about this for about two seconds. We knew this was going to happen, like I was saying in the intro. The Pac-12, they're falling apart, and it's now being stated that they're going to re-examine some of their bowl tie-in options. I think it's up to five bowls. Yeah, here it is right here by Brett McMurphy. All five bowls with Pac-12 tie-ins, Alamo, Las Vegas, Holiday Sun, and L.A., have begun discussions about changing to different conference affiliation for the 2024 and 2025 seasons. Yeah, that's all there is to it. I don't need to explain why. You know why. The Pac-12 fell apart. Let's keep it short and simple and move on. I did want to share that with y'all though because I didn't see too many people talking about it and since we have been talking about the Pac-12 so much, did want to keep you up to date on everything going on. But now finally moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, let's get into it. I know why you're here, you know why you're here. We want to talk about the Big Ten and SEC rival matchup. Or not the rival matchup, but it's more so of the rivalry that the fans have. Not even the teams have, but the fans have. Everybody knows this for the past 15, 20, 25 years, everybody's tried to have this debate that, oh, the Big Ten's eventually going to catch up to the SEC. And this is common football knowledge. Big Ten fans hate SEC fans, and SEC fans hate Big Ten fans. I'd be straight up lying to you if I sat up here and tried to act like I didn't know why, because I do. It's for the obvious reasons. If you know, you know. Me, personally, I don't hate Big Ten fans. I actually admire them, and I respect them so much because they love football just as much as us in the South do. And that's also a part of the reason one of my favorite fan bases out there is the Oklahoma Sooners. Say what you want about Oklahoma, but they got one of the best fan bases out there, and there's no debate. I admire and respect the Oklahoma and Tennessee fan base so, and I mean so much. And that same admiration, it extends out to the Big Ten as an entire conference. Don't let all the snow and bad and sloppy weather fool you. They show up and they show out for their teams. And actually, if you want me to be honest, that's why I respect them so much because there ain't no dang way I'm going to a college football game when it's five degrees and it's snowing. Could y'all imagine how unbearable and miserable it would have been to go to that Ohio State Northwestern game last year where it was raining and it was like 45 miles? Oh, man, it was awful. But that's really besides the point. The point is I respect the Big Ten and I respect their fans. I know we have our disagreements here and there, but it's all fun and jokes. Getting that out the way, though, let's take a look at the current Big Ten conference. 
that. If you know anything about college football, if not, I'm about to inform you, the second best division, not conference, but division in the country is the Big Ten East. I'd put the SEC West at number one, Big Ten East at number two, and the SEC, yeah, SEC East at number three. The reason I'd put the Big Ten East behind the SEC West is because the Big Ten East is extremely top heavy, and after the three teams I'm about to show you, not very good. You got Michigan, top five team, the Little Bro Ohio State, top five team, and then you got Penn State, a top 10 team. Outside of that, nobody, Rutgers, trash they suck michigan state sucks maryland sucks and indiana sucks taking a look at the west here which is arguably the worst division in the entire sport of college football man it's awful who won the big 10 west last year wasn't it purdue right am i right on that or was it illinois i think it was purdue either way that should go to tell you how miserable it is purdue or illinois won the conference it's awful man but let's take a look at it illinois eh, they're okay they're mediocre iowa you know how it goes. Worst offense in the country. <laughs> Minnesota, they wasn't too good last year. Nebraska, they was awful. Northwestern, one of the worst teams in the country. Purdue, and then you got Wisconsin. The Big Ten West is awful, and I'll leave it at that. Their records last year speak for themselves. Let's take a look at the SEC so I can give everybody a quick refresher, because I know not everybody knows all the teams in every conference. In the SEC West, the best division, in my humble opinion, in the country, here's your teams. Alabama, top five team. Arkansas, fringe top 25 team. Auburn, we know they're on the rebuild. They'll be back. LSU, top seven team in my opinion. Mississippi State, top 25 team. Ole Miss, top 25 team. And Texas a and top 25 team. The SEC West is brutal. I'll put it this way. You put any of these – you put Arkansas. That's arguably one of the worst teams in the SEC West. You put Arkansas or Auburn in the Big Ten West, they'd probably be favored to win it. But since they're in the SEC West, it's one of the worst teams. To go along with that in the SEC Leash, you got Georgia, top five team. Tennessee Volunteers, top seven team in my humble opinion. Then you do have a little drop off. Florida, eh, mediocre at best. Kentucky, mediocre at best. Missouri, mediocre at best. South Kagalaki, top 20 team. And then you got Vandy, not that good. The SEC East just gets carried by Georgia and Tennessee at this current moment in time. And South Carolina is also decent. All in all, though, for the past 15 years, what has everybody said about the SEC? What's been the biggest knock? Oh, yeah, well, they get carried by Alabama. Alabama's bringing them all the championships, blah, 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 blah. And to a certain extent, I would agree with that. But you do also understand and realize if you took Alabama out of the SEC, that would also open up the door for another SEC team to win a championship. So I think that argument is really foolish and dumb. But getting past that also, I'd say for the past 15, 20 years, from top to bottom, the SEC... It's way better than the Big Ten, not even close. And I've never, and I mean I've never, ever, ever felt like it's even been close. I've never even felt like you could have the argument of comparing the Big Ten to the SEC. But now, with all of this realignment bullcrap going on, it's a new game. Let me pull up the new Big Ten map. I got it somewhere. Here it is. On the West Coast, you now have three top 25 teams, and UCLA may be a top 25 team in the future. I'm going to point out your potential top 25 teams right here. Penn State, the Little Bro Ohio State, Michigan, Illinois, I'll give them that one. I'll even say Wisconsin, USC, I'll say UCLA, in the, no, 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 I ain't going to say them, but Oregon and Washington. Potentially, by 2024, it's looking like the Big Ten is going to have about roughly eight to nine top 25 teams. Not bad, not bad, not bad whatsoever. Remember though, take into account the Big Ten currently has 18 teams. Well, on the flip side in the SEC, let's point out potential top 25 teams. I'll say South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, so now we're already at seven, Texas, that's a guarantee, Texas A&M, LSU, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Now remember, this is give or take, but at this current moment in time, out of all these SEC schools, I'd say currently you got 12 top 25 teams. On the Big Ten, you got about eight or nine. And remember, this is the SEC only with 16 schools. The Big Ten has 18. So from top to bottom, the SEC, even with a lesser amount of teams, it's still way better than the Big Ten. But what does everybody say? Who cares about top 25 teams? This is a blah, 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 blah. All everybody and anybody cares about is how many championships have you won. That is how people base how good your conference is. Did your conference win a championship? No, the SEC has the most championships in the past 15 years. Therefore, that's why we label the SEC as the best. So let's take a deeper look at it and let's see how many top 12 teams there are in each conference. Starting with the Big Ten, you got Penn State. I'll give you that. We'll put them in the top 12. You got the Little Bro Ohio State, Michigan, and then you got nah, none of them teams. I'll give you USC. That's four, and that's it. I personally don't have Oregon or Washington in my top 12. On the flip side in the SEC, obviously, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, no. Tennessee, yeah, that's three. 
LSU, that's four, and I do have Texas in there at five. So, ah, you see the numbers are getting a little closer. I'd say the Big Ten right now has four top 12 teams, and the SEC has five. My point is, and the reason I'm bringing all this up, is because, no, I don't think in 2024 and moving on forward, even with the new additions, I don't think the Big Ten is even close to the SEC. I think the SEC is still far superior. However, I do believe that the Big Ten may start seeing the same results and similar results to the SEC. Because we've been so used to seeing the SEC have two to three teams fighting for a 14 playoff spot. Well, I think once we go to that 12 team playoff format, you're going to have four or five Big Ten teams trying to claw their way in. Same thing with the SEC. You're going to have four, five, six, seven teams. I think this is great for college football, and I can already tell we're going to have some great <laughs> arguments about the Big Ten and the SEC in the near future. All this realignment stuff has definitely made things between the SEC and the Big Ten way more fascinating. I could go on and on. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, roll a minute.